Hey guys, I'm here in Avaca, Indiana. I'm here for my cousin's memorial service. He passed away two months ago. And of course, the conversation last night and today has been remembering loved ones, right? My dad passed away in 2007 from cancer. My grandma passed away in 2006. And now we're remembering my cousin. But we're remembering all the people that have come before. Remembrance, right? And celebration and lament. Lament and hope. That's what these conversations have been about. And that's where God is right now with the church, guys. There's lament and there's hope. There's lament for where the church is and there's hope for where the church could be, should be, and is going. But here's the reality, guys. Part of the church is heading deeper into the lament of the darkness of death. It is he heading further into religiosity and a spirit of control and a spirit of condemnation. And part of the church, God is raising back up into a new season, a new season of hope and renewal. The question is, which church are you a part of and which direction are you headed? Walk with me. I'm headed out here actually to a cemetery and I think that's very fitting, <laughs> right? Things die, new things come. This is the way of Jesus, the, the way of death, burial, resurrection, right? We're always going through seasons and the, the, the way that the church really gets stuck is to not continue that cycle, right? When it gets stuck in a season that has come, that is new or was new and now is old and God is moving us ahead again and we're like, no, 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 we don't want to move ahead. We like where we're at, <clears throat> right? The church can end up in a place like this. A cemetery, a place of death and dying, because it won't move on. It's planted itself too deep in a place, in a time, in a tradition, in a culture, and a ideology, a theology, a mode, and it won't move forward because it likes where it is. And God is trying to move us forward again. And half the church is like, "No, we don't want it. We don't like it. We like this. It worked." still working and God's like, no, it's not working. It wasn't meant to be forever. Forever guys is when eternity comes, heaven and earth are made one as John saw in his revelation chapter 21, heaven and earth become one. Heaven comes down, we don't go up. Did you know that? So. God is always moving us forward, but guess what? In John's revelation, he also saw a harlot on a beast, the mother of abominations, the mother of prostitution. Guess the number one primary image of a prostitute in scripture is God's people, not the world who never knew God, because if you've never become faithful to God, you can't be faithless to God. The prostitute throughout scripture, Old Testament and new is the church that has forgotten God. <clears throat> so this is my question for you today. If you are a Christian, if you are a church and you've forgotten God, how would you know? You wouldn't know by your pastors preaching, by good scriptures, by good theology, Right? The point, guys, of idolatry, and this was always the case in Scripture, people did not know they were in idolatry, so God sent them prophets to warn them. They often didn't listen. What did they say? Oh, no, we're doing everything right. We're going to the right religious place. We're following the right, right religious practices. We have the right religious truths. We're following the right religious leaders who are telling us we're doing all the right religious things. We're fine. And God would send prophet after prophet after prophet, and they would kill them and stone them, as Jesus said. Even in the very temple God gave, they would kill them because they said, we're right. Why? They couldn't see it. Why? Because a religious book, a religious institution, a religious place, a religious set of beliefs, a religious group of people cannot show you the truth. When you are stuck in idolatry, you will not see it. 
you will only see it actually one way. Prophets. One way. When God himself tells you, because when you are in idolatry, in this heavy spirit of religiosity and rules, you will think you are fine when you're not because you cannot see it on your own. This is why Jesus came to give the Holy Spirit so that we would not end back up where, where Israel ended up following good rules but not knowing God. But guess what? We turn Jesus' way back into an institution of rules and religious places and religious people and religious doctrines and religious institutions and religious leaders. And as long as we follow these religious institutions and their leaders, we'll be fine. No, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit so we would have a sensitivity to God, to hear God directly, and that we would grow into greater knowing of God personally through the Spirit so that we would never wander from God, so that we would always be able to hear God saying, this is the way you should go walk in it, which is what is said and spoken about the Holy Spirit in the prophets, right? So that we would be able to hear the Spirit saying, this is the way you should go. Not so that we could follow good rules that say this is the way you should go or good institutions or good religious leaders, guys. So once again, the church is stuck. We don't know that we've wandered. We don't know that we're in a cemetery in the midst of death and dying, stuck in a place and can't move on. We don't know because why? We've forgotten how to hear God. And so the real remedy today for the church again, once again, is we need to get back to hearing God for ourselves, each one individually, spirit to spirit, Holy Spirit to our spirits, guys. You cannot rely on your pastor. You cannot rely on your church tradition, your church sacraments, your church rituals, your church rules, no matter how old they are, guys. I don't care if your church is 2,000 years old. The whole, everybody's church is 2,000 years old, guys, because we all come from the same church. But, that's not what saves you. That's not what makes you right, keeps you right, sets you right, keeps you going in the right way. Institutions, guys, we don't have a mediator anymore in the human realm, in human terms. Jesus is our new mediator. Jesus mediates the new covenant through a new way, the way of the Holy Spirit. Religion will kill you because it will give you a false sense of being right with God in your own mind, through your own rules, when... The way of Jesus is the way of the Holy Spirit telling you every day that you are right and you are becoming more right and you are moving in the right direction, guys. We never stop and settle in and feel comfortable. The Spirit never makes you feel comfortable, guys. He's always like, let's keep going, let's keep growing, let's keep moving, let's keep knowing God. Today, the church is stuck once again in a place, becoming more immovable, more dead. How would you know if you're stuck in dead religion, the dead Christian religion that is dying and isn't moving forward? There's only one way, the Holy Spirit. So, can you hear the Spirit? Do you have the ears to hear what the Spirit says? Or are you just listening to your pastor and your church tradition and your good rules and your good understanding of scripture? Then you're, if that's where you're at, then you don't know where you're at guys and that's a problem. Maybe you're fine, maybe you're not, but you won't know it if you don't know the Spirit. And so if you cannot hear the Spirit, and if your church institutions aren't teaching you to hear the Spirit, they're leading you astray and they're leading you into darkness and they're leading you into the idolatry of religiosity. And it will not save you. It will not set you right, it will not keep you right. So, know God, know Jesus, know the Spirit. Through the Spirit He's placed within us. That is the only way you could know if you are being made right, moving in the right direction. Don't end up here, guys. In a cemetery with the dead. The spiritually dead, the spiritually deaf, the spiritually insensitive. We can come alive again. That's the cool thing is no matter how many times the church dies, it's always resurrected. The question is, will you be... A part of the resurrecting church or the dying church? All right. See ya.